Well, I'll call the meeting to order. We have an opportunity to look at minutes. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we approve minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Agenda items? I have nothing to add. Any citizen? I have something. Sure. Oh, let's I'll make a motion to approve this. Oh, I'm sorry. No different agenda no. items? No. I would entertain a motion to approve agenda. I did. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Go ahead. <clears throat> I feel, uh, as a citizen, that I'm being singled out by the recorder's office for a special charge uh, to examine their documents that nobody else is uh, receiving. Right now, right now I'm charged 36 cents a minute to examine like mortgages and deeds that that sort of thing, and that's by the minute. She gets out a uh, she gets out a stopwatch and she keeps track. I just had a conversation with her. She is not charging any other customer in existence by the minute. Is anyone asking for the same information here again? There was a customer yesterday that came in and got a list of names. That's apparently very close to what I'm doing. But this is discussions about marriage licenses, just anything. There's there's people that take up 20 minutes over time at times, and she's not charging them by the minute. I, as I understand, the information that you are asking for is public record. Public record, which is something that that can be charged for, is that correct? If I get copies of it by the page, it can be charged for, which I do not do. I only examine the documents and I make a, a record of them on my own, but I don't. I don't take a piece of paper. I don't. You're just you're, like just like at the office. You're examining office. them, but you're photographing them, right? That's correct. Yeah. But it's the same. It's the same as I do at uh, the auditor's office, at the clerk of court. Every every government office in town, I examine the records, and occasionally I take a uh, a photographic record of them, which I'm allowed to do under the law, at no charge because that's not part of the cost. It's not a cost to the office. <clears throat> she is the only person that uh, charges charges me by the minute of any place I've ever been in the entire history of me doing this, and she charges nobody else by the minute. This isn't this isn't just special to this office. This is just only only me. And I feel like I feel like this might have to go further in order to get it resolved. Which is why I'm coming to you since you are know, the supervisors for the county. Have discussion? But I think the other people only come in once in a while, once in a blue moon, and you're in there, what, every day? I'm forced to go in there every day because she gets rid of those records every day. Otherwise, I'd go in there once a week just like anyone else. Right now, she does keep those documents on PDF. And even though it's not against the law to give me those documents on PDF, she won't give them to me. At which case, I'd be in there once a week. It'd take her one minute to transfer it, and that's how much... And that's how much time per week we'd spend together. I, I, I know she has concerns about social security numbers and certain things that, that she's responsible for that, that I, I, know, I know she has concern in that. She area. redacts those before she sends them to the, uh, to the third party in Florida that puts them on the web. She redacts them before I get to them. Um, I, I guess a as we, part need, of we need to have a discussion uh, with her. And, and uh, can we go ahead and go on to the? Uh, can I request that we be on the agenda next week to have this discussion? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Uh, we have uh, a gentleman from uh, Group Services here today for an update and some discussion about our health care um, for the upcoming year. And so uh, I'll turn my okay. floor over to you. Okay. I just wanted to uh, uh, review a couple things. You've already received the renewal from Walmart at 9%. So what we've done is we've taken that renewal and brought in the self-funded portion of the plan and just simply <clears throat> analyzed the self-funding and then 
uh, looked at what the renewals would look like uh, if we do nothing. So this is kind of a do nothing, plus it's a review of, of the self-funded portion of the plan. So um, we've broken it into the three plans. We have, we have plan one, plan two, plan three. And if you look on page um, seven of the document, which is, uh, we're going to start out with plan one, which is the $500 deductible plan. That's who, anyone who has single coverage is on that plan. So we have currently about 20 people on that plan. And so you'll see from the self-funded standpoint, we projected an expense of about $28,900. Uh, we're on track to spend about seventeen two. And what we've done is we've taken expenses July through February and annualized that. So we've not actually spent the 17.2 yet, but that's what we're projecting based upon averages that will be where we'll be. And so then, if we keep our budget the same, if you look at um, page 10, if you skip in, I'll come back. You'll see that um, with the increase from Walmart, the 9% increase, if our fees and the safety fund budget stays the same. On plan one, we'd be looking at a 6.25% increase. Um, if you go back a page to page nine, we've also looked and said, we've tried to do analysis to say, does it still make sense for Sac County to do some kind of self-funding? Is it saving us money, which is why we do it? We did a five-year analysis, and just on plan one, um, over five years, it saved the county um, just over $75,600 just on that plan alone. So then if we go to plan two, um, and you look at page 12, you'll see that, um, again, on the self-funded part, um, our budgeted or projected expense based on 42 families is uh, just over $111,000. And we're projecting that we're on track to spend about 61.7. So we're coming in well under our budget on that plan. And we are seeing some increase in claims activity. Uh, but again, if you look at page 15, you'll see that, again, if we make no changes, if we, if we just increase our monthly rate by the amount of Blue Cross increase, we would be looking at a, about a 6.7% increase on this on Plan 2. Um, we also looked at the savings on that, and on Plan 2, over a five-year period, the county has saved um, in excess of a half a million dollars by agreeing to do some self-funding. Um, and then the similar analysis for Plan 3, if you look at page 17, and we have right now 23 families on Plan 3, and we were looking at a budget for the year of about $55,350. Um, we're on track to spend only about $11,400, so coming in well under budget on that plan. Um, if we leave our budget the same, um, you'll see on page 20 that we would be looking on that plan at about a 6.85% increase. Again, what that's basically taken into account is the increase from Blue Cross. Um, this year is the first year we've had anybody on plan 3, and so we've gone back and looked um, and compared what if we were fully insured versus the county doing some self-funding, and it's produced in one year almost $107,000 of savings. So if you combine all that, um, I have to say it's been a pretty good trip for the county. But it's been worthwhile for the county county employees to do some self-funding. It's kept the cost much lower than it would have been if we were just going to Blue Cross and saying, we pay premium, you pay coin. Questions on that so far? Okay. Um, the other thing that I, I would like to at least let you know we put together is there's some claims information that's in your folder as well. 
it looks like. It's underneath this chart. It's this one right here. Just a couple of things I, I'm going to guess with the Blue Cross Rift we talked a little bit about. Um, claims and the claims activity. Um, we've taken some of that information. We've done uh, really a three-year analysis of that to, to start to look at some trends uh, of what's happening and where we might be having uh, claims activity. And you'll see at the very top um, what your total claims expense. This is not what Blue Cross paid. This is the total expense. And you can see over a three-year period, um, you know, we're seeing some increase in, in the total expense, which is not uncommon. We've seen a little bit bigger jump this year, and you'll see that's primarily due to an increase in the number of large claims, which we, Blue Cross terms, individuals with claims over $10,000, where they have paid more than $10,000. Um, and if you look at the bottom of this page, you can see what's happening with our, our claims incurred per member. So we're basically saying we're seeing an uptick in claims activity. And the reason we, we like to look at that is obviously if claims activity is going up, it probably means Blue Cross is paying more, which means years down the road, that's going to end up being reflected in our premium. Uh, on the second page, you'll see, we've looked at some information regarding uh, RX claims. Uh, for sure. <coughs> Frankly, it's pretty good news uh, for you because in terms of the claims covered, the, the, I mean, it stayed pretty stable. Uh, generic utilization is up which is good. Uh, the number of scripts per member per year, how many scripts do they fill average, has stayed very stable. 11.7 um, to 11.5 to 12. One thing I want you to notice, it's a trend, I just want you to be aware of, if you look in the lower right, you'll see that the covered charge per member per year is going up. And if you look at these charts, you might say, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, we're, we're using more generic. Our number of scripts is staying stable. Why would this be going up? If we're using more generic, shouldn't it be going down? Well, there's, there's something that's happening in the industry. There's a trend, and that trend is um, there's development of a lot of specialty drugs. Now that's what's happening mostly in the, in the pharma industry. So they're drugs that are geared towards very specific conditions. And, and they have patent protection, so there's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of competition. So we're seeing that drive cost. So the trend on, on non-specialty drugs is running about 78% on specialty drugs. It's running about 18%. So even though generic is going up, which is good, we can still expect to see some increase occurring in our drug costs, and it's going to be driven primarily because of specialty drugs, um, just so you know that. And then if you look at the, the, the next page, these two charts right here, um, we did two, we, what we've done is we've looked, compared the last two years. Uh, the red represents claims for people who had less than $10,000 of claims in a year, how much was spent, and then the blue represents the expenses for individuals with claims of $10,000 or more. Claims paid of $10,000 or more. <coughs> and so, if you look back at the first page, you'll see the total medical claims went from a million eighty-four to a million three sixty-three. If you look at this chart, you'll see Virtually all of that increase was with people with claims over $10,000. It went up some below, but you'll see. So um, we don't get enough information to know whether those are ongoing claims or not. So they, this may be our year. If you look at any five or six year period, you're going to have a year that what we would call a bad claims year. And that bad claims year means you have more people with large claims. <coughs> So one year doesn't make a trend, but what you can see is that's where most of our increase has been. If these don't consist of 
ongoing conditions, then we can expect that not to hurt us in future renewals. We'll just have to watch the claims information and see if, it, if there are ongoing claims, then it, it would give me some cause for concern on future renewals because it would tell me we're probably not going to go down in the red much. And if this continues to go up, then they'll make underwriting adjustments in our renewals. So we'll just have to watch that. But by doing this analysis, at least we can see what's going on. And that, the, the, uh, as far as our safety fund, the, the very small differential in, in the red, it's, it's quantity that hurts our safety fund balance, not the big ones. Yeah, and that's, that's why we're staying relatively correct. neutral. Yeah, the safety fund is 100% frequency. Yeah. If that starts going up by large margin, then what that tells us is we have a lot more people with a lot more claims across the group. But it, I, I'm with, so. with your information about the, the large claims, I'm, I'm pointing out that it's, it's quantity uh, in the number of claims, it's not the big ones that right. reflect badly on our safety funds. That's right. That's correct. That's correct. So that's kind of a review of where we're at. Um, um, are there specific questions that you guys have, or is there additional information that would be helpful? Uh, I, I guess just our projected things that we need for future um, ability to set, set our rates and costs. We'll do the analysis on the um, reserve fund. Yeah. So we've got that. We'll have that to you by the end of the week. Great. Okay. Uh, if we can use the reserve fund to soften the 9% to some degree and still maintain the being sure that it's, of it. Yeah. Okay. Being sure that it's going to be solvent for the future yeah. years. We'll go back and compare that to what we did last year. And I think it should be should should come out very close, maybe even better, because we've come in under our budget for the safety fund. So yeah, the, the safety fund numbers look very good. Yeah. That, that's hopeful. It could be a double-edged sword if that had been bad and the rate increase in that size. Yeah, because we've seen groups where the red bar is going up and the blue bar is going up. Significant numbers, and that's that's not good. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I will have that by the end of the week, and then we can figure out another time. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Glad to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks. See you again. Thanks, sir. You bet. Yeah. Thanks. See you. See you. So, you bet. I think the last time I forgot my phone. How far did you get? Downstairs. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. You're I have a, I have a question. Um, yesterday, uh, it was before 10 a.m. I got a copy of the uh, the agenda for today. Indicating that uh, was that group services mm -hmm. yeah. indicating that they were scheduled for ten forty five. Mm -hmm. Is that still what the agenda indicates it is today? No, they came early and they've got other places to go, and they just they, the board just moved them up on the agenda. What uh what what time what time in the morning did you begin deliberating? We on, didn't on deliver. He he come in with with information that we were looking at, which we started to do, and then we covered it in the board meeting. All right. Thank you. Yep. We didn't make any decision then or no. We haven't now. I mean we're sure. we just he come with our numbers for our safety fund and we're now giving him direction to So it was sort of a, a work session you were having to take yeah, information? Just to, to see what what um, our safety fund our value of our safety fund is and what he's now gonna have to go back and do projections that he'll deliver back and then we'll have to make some kind of Choices for next year's plans. So, okay. Uh, we have claims to take care of. I'll make a motion to pay the claims on the register. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we pay claims. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We also have drainage claims. I'll make a motion.
motion to approve the drainage claims. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we pay drainage claims. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Sherry? Okay, the master matrix for Aaron Nealon. Let's see. He turned in a master matrix. I don't know if you looked that over. I want to look it over. Yeah, I'd like. Do you want the pack or just the. Just, just your scoring. Well, he'd come in with adequate points. Last week, they want, they're doing a site evaluation. Yeah, I got that back from your letter from you too. Tomorrow we're doing that. For this one? Yes. Wednesday, March 21st, September. Excess of 440 and they scored Yeah. 
on the center kind of Frida neighborhood really. Carroll County. To entertain a motion for action for the matrix. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Neyland matrix. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Yep. And then I didn't know if you want to think about this. I've gotten a couple of people ask me if the county's going to do any ordinances for the right bride. I know last time we didn't do any. I got a copy of Calhoun and Univista copy. If you want to read it, look it over and think about it, and you can make the decision. And what are they addressing as far as... Just to get people set up vendors along the Oh, vendors? Yeah. That's what you're... That's the focus of the deal? Yeah, that's mainly the... the yeah, both of them. So, and so why is that necessary if, if uh, it, you have your public health rules? Yeah, it really isn't, but I think this puts a little bit more enforcement in it. You know, Would you I mean, like if, that? I don't know. You don't know. BB, or Pocahontas County did it one time where they didn't let anybody set outside of the unincorporated, in the unincorporated areas. And he said that was, he got a lot of slack for that. He didn't think that was worth that. He said there was a lot of people. So I don't know. Why, him. why would they agree to that? Just to make it simpler and keep everybody in the incorporated areas, I think. What? Hmm? Some farmer wants to put up a lemonade stand and get no stopping. Yeah, well, see, that's where you could then, you know what I mean? Well, but but I, I'm not sure then wants to serve 2,000 pork chops at the farmer's yard. Okay. But, uh, now they still need a food license, but, you know, and that's what happened. Yeah, you know, like last year I went down to Carroll County and stuff like that. You know, we did it. And... But they, they still have to adhere by the Board of Health rules. Yeah. Whether you would have that or not. Yeah. That's, I don't know if it does any good. You, know, you, you want to look it over or you want to just forget it? <coughs> no, well, I mean, I, I guess we can look at it. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure whether... It does any good or anything, yeah. yeah or I, I guess I'm not sure if it's necessary. Yeah. I'm not saying it is either. There will be a lot of stamps outside the incorporated. That, uh, that happens frequently. I, I go on Rag Bride almost every year. And uh, it seems to me it would be a matter of enforcement, right? You just have to go along and shut people down that don't have a license. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm not, I'm not sure why you would want to. I mean, I, it, it, it's a, it's a county-wide thing, and, and why shouldn't everyone have the same opportunity? To yeah. I don't, they're just, they talk about, you know, no sales of beer or liquor within 500 yards of the Rag Bride Rob, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. So I think, you know, just, there's different little things. I don't know if that's, you know, a big issue. I know one year, like a couple of years ago, we caught somebody selling, it was like jello shots, which is got liquor in them, which is, you know, nobody had a liquor license or anything like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, we stopped that person from doing it. You know, you really don't need people on bikes getting intoxicated to you, you know, on the route. So, you know, that, I don't know. But, I mean, but why is it different in the country? I mean, you can stop in town if, if you want to stop in town and get intoxicated. Yeah. You can. Yeah, and I and can and do. <laughs> well, that's a little different deal if you have to have a liquor license to sell it. Yeah. No, they, they did, and they yeah. didn't have one. So. Yeah, so that, that would take yeah. care of itself. Right, but I mean, as far as thinking that you're going to not have people intoxicated on the route, they're, they're, it doesn't... I mean, they're going to stop yeah. somewhere. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, and we, you know, like last year, there was somebody that had a liquor license on the route. You know what I mean? And they were selling drinks, you know, which is fine. You know, they're legal. You know. But We'd have to approve that. <laughs> but for me, <coughs> I know in Lakeview, I read, I read it, they're not going to grant any additional liquor permits in the appropriate area. Yeah, other than those that have the liquor license. The last time I, I remember, like, they did a couple of committee let, I think Lakewood got somebody rented Lakewood. See, I don't know. Somebody already sent me an uh, application to set up a food stand at Lakewood, and I don't know if they. This was yeah. sent two, three weeks ago before the town decided that, so I don't know if they knew that or not. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different. You know, they're going to be on a state highway all 
when they leave Lakeview until they get to the date. They were running on the, the state highway the whole day. No kidding. 175? Got to get east to west. Oh, my God. What's I thought they'd shoot them up north. Wow. And, I did, uh, too. And run them through, you know, north of Yetter and Falls. Yeah. But, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, D D46. The problem they, you know, they run into is they run out of food. If you don't run them through, you know, Lake City, Farnerville, uh, you know, Dayton, uh, west of Dayton, Where's the next stop? The North 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 They'll go north of Dayton, you know, uh, to Lehigh, and across the Des Moines River at Lehigh. And, uh, then they'll, they'll take county roads from Lehigh to come into Webster City from the south, I think. Mm -hmm. So they don't want them on 20. Yeah, yeah, okay. will be bad, yeah. I, I mean, did you just want a copy of it? You want to yeah. look it over? Or? Well, yeah, I'd like to look it over. I got both of them here. We talked about it at that League of Cities meeting. And I was surprised. Yeah. You know, I heard they were going to go to Auburn, but I thought they'd run east to Auburn and north. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, it's just, it's a safety issue, probably. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, we check with Joe. The engineer's not. We had another. Okay. So okay. Not be here. Did double check with Joe to see if she got any. Just the uh, two away. Two away. Two <laughs> Did you receive anything from the engineer? People in Sac City. I mean, they try and keep people moving along. I, I think he was planning to fax something but possible. But it's hard. Um, it's if you get something, would you run it up? I, I think he probably will. Beer or, you know, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Entertainment venue. Yes. Same thing, yeah, but I think he's planning on Um, do you have a consider mileage rate reimbursement? I've had a couple of different um, county employees ask if there was any discussion or if there was going to be any discussion about an increase in mileage rate due to the cost of gasoline going up. Um, I think right now it's what, 370? 374 and all the boat. 374. We're currently paying 45 cents a mile. Bump it up to 50 cents, I guess. That helped cover some of the increased costs. It's it's up a buck. Yeah. I, mean, I think more. the IRS is 55. 55.5 55. last time. Does yeah. anybody know? I We're know. never as high as they are. No. Since I've been. Do you have access to know what the... I, I don't. Fit? I was just doing the math. Five, five cents is, a, if you're getting 25 miles a gallon, it's an extra buck 25. You know, for a gallon is what you'd be paying. Um, I'm, I can go either way. And some counties do just follow the IRS rate. Yeah. Fluctuated up and down as it fluctuate. Yeah, I talked to several supervisors, and that's what they do. Mm -hmm. But we talked about it before, I think, in the supervisor board meetings, and the fluctuation sometimes it comes to the darnest times from coming up or going down. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to kind of have something more steady when we talked about it before. But that would take it out of the, I mean, that wouldn't take it out of the hands of the supervisors, but it would eliminate. You're having to make that decision whenever yeah. it came around. If if that's what they were allowing, then that's what we would reimburse them for. For some reason, I was thinking the Fed rate was fifty-seven. Yeah, okay. okay. my the last well, the last time, but how often does that change weekly? Well, the last oh, one I got. They'll change it quarterly sometimes. Two thousand twelve was fifty-five five. That's, that's where it currently is right now. For, well, that's what it says that 
money zine. 55 five for business miles. I'll, I'll make a motion to increase the rate from 45 cents to 50 cents. I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, change our mileage rate from we'll 35 to 50 with what kind of day? First day. Okay. That's, that's that's fine. You okay with that as a second go? Okay. The the motion is to change the mileage rate from forty five to fifty, um, being recognized on the first of April. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The motion will carry. That's all I have. Um, let's recess for a little bit and. And uh, wait and see if the engineer faxes something. He was he was needing to check with Mike, but he had nothing that needed action today. Okay. And, uh, he was thinking he was going to fax something over. So. Well, come out of recess. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. It's moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.